what what do you think Eric Ten Hag's going to do? Does he drop him? Does he sell him? How does this get resolved? Well, selling him, they need a club to come and make a bid, um, other than the Saudi Arabian club that was never going to work because I think the primary motivation for Ronaldo is Champions League. You know, either winning it or scoring some more goals in it, so that he overtakes Lionel Messi in the group stage uh, tally. He's, he's three behind at the moment, and, and make sure that he uh, extends his record at the top of the overall scoring charts. Um, so there's that, you know, do they come to a point? I mean, United rejected this story yesterday that uh, that went out there. Um, do they come to a point where they think, is it beneficial to actually, you know, have some, come to some kind of agreement and let him go on a free, you know, and uh, let him, which sounds crazy because again, he scored so many goals last season. How, how are you going to let that guy go for free? But you've got to think about the collateral, I suppose. Um, does he drop him? You know, Anthony Marshall, that's the one sort of, light I suppose in that piece um, which is crazy again that we're sort of talking about Martial in this way because you know we've had managers the one who was on loan in Sevilla second half of last exactly. season yeah. <laughs> exactly but Ten Hag might look at that and think at least that's someone that I can put in at centre forward that has done well for me on pre-season tour that will do what I ask to, so far to his mind um, so at least that's a change you can make and that will be really interesting I mean if he drops Ronaldo for Liverpool to bring in Anthony Martial He's, he's really put his flag in the ground there, hasn't he? And said, this is how I'm going to proceed. But he's done it with the running already. So he's, he's shown sort of strength in that way. And I, and I do admire that. You have to admire that. You know, it might not all go correct, but at least he's making decisions and, and being decisive with it. Um, he, is, he is trying things to, he is trying to adapt to, to the players that he's got at his disposal. But I, you, you go back to it, the recruitment. And, you know, Eric Ten Hag was in the building Basically, they knew he was getting the job in April, didn't they? You know, he was actually in at Old Trafford in May. How have we got to this point where the season has started, two defeats in, and the three signings that they've got, you know, are a left back, a centre back, and um, a free transfer, you know, and ultimately you look at the people that are making the decisions. And I don't know if we'll touch on the Glazers because clearly that is now also a, a big topic. We should, I think. That is a, a major topic. And again, the protests, you know, we think are going to happen ahead of the Liverpool game. But they've been in charge for so many years now and they've put people in place that, to my mind, aren't delivering the goods right now. You know, we look at John Murtagh, who's the football director. He's appointed Eric Ten Hag. It's on him now. You know, this kind of stuff can't just be the manager, can't just be the players. You can criticise them, absolutely, but they are scrutinised every week and they might ultimately get sold or lose their jobs if they're not performing. Uh, John Murtagh has put Eric Ten Hag in place and the recruitment team, um, you know, in terms of Steve Brown, the head of recruitment, where are their suggestions? Where are their uh, signings that they're making to help Eric Ten Hag along the way? Th- these are questions for them now. Um, and they're, they're big questions because you look at how bad it's got, it needs um, proper solutions to it. Andy? Yeah. Carl? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree, Laurie. This is... This is a very you know post Fergie Manchester United style way of thinking of we've got Eric Ten Hag we've got a really smart manager and then he's just left him to it we've not put any thought into what he's good at he, Ten Hag you talk to any sort of Dutch journalist or anyone that's expert in passing reference of Dutch football will tell you Ten Hag is a tracksuit manager he's not great in press conferences he's not necessarily great in, in terms of things that you would, you know you'd say a manager does he's more of a head coach so what Manchester United should have been doing since April, is furnishing the club with people that can allow Ten Hag to focus on the training methods. And they just haven't done that. If you look at how long Manchester City, and I'm loath to mention City on this podcast in this way, how long they put things in and around. So when Pep Guardiola came, it was just like a duck to water. They went off and made sure they got the correct chief executive. They made sure they've got the correct recruitment things. They got everything in place for Pep and yeah, money, blah, 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 blah. But if you have, if you know Ten Hag is your guy in April, at the very least, you should get him like two or three more of his proper transfer targets before preseason starts, before tour starts. And you say, you know, there's the saying, you know, many hands make light work. Who, where are the hands? Who are the hands? Who, how did these people get into these positions at Manchester United? And are they the best in the Premier League at what they do? You've just had Andy talk about his problems in front of his football and everyone's avoiding it. Is there anyone right now in Manchester United squad that you think is within the top five of their position in the Premier League? And, and, and this is the problem right now. We, we've talked about the, the, the Andy Mitten standard of quality, top four in a trophy. 
um, Andy, do you think United can get that right now? I'd, I'd bite your hands off right now for that. <laughs> I really would. Uh, top Because to finish in the top four, you've got to have two or three serious runs over mm-hmm. the season. You've got to win a lot of football matches. You've got to beat good teams. A trophy, well, United have not won a trophy since 2017. Your point about April is, is, is a good one. To be fair to United, they have been trying, but it's not coming off. And who are the people? Well, John Murta has, has spent the whole summer travelling around, um, dealing with agents. United were definitely uh, circumspect at the start of the transfer window that they were trying to, the agents were trying to rip them off big time. And I've seen some of the quoted figures that people have put towards Manchester United, and you just think they're taking the piss completely. Now, that might stand up in June, but at the end of August, when rival clubs have managed to bring players in, the argument holds less water. When United are increasingly linked to players who appear more random than who appear to have been in the scouting system. So you've got two problems there. United are struggling to get deals done. I spoke to someone um, in Holland on Friday who said, for example, Martinez, good player, not worth anything like that amount of money. And that, and that's someone whose opinion I respect, who's been consistent with me over the years. And that's just his opinion. But that's someone, again, working at a very high level in football who knows his stuff. That person said to me years ago, tomorrow a guy called Daily Blind will sign for Man United. He knows what's going on. And we see uh, the manager going back to the players in the Dutch league who, who he's familiar with. Fine, managers do that, except it's not going to be fine if they don't work out. And it's not going to be fine if Manchester United don't bring in some of the key positions. I'm not going to say the word FDJ <laughs> for the first time in this podcast, but he has been so central to Manchester United's planned recruitment this season that if it doesn't come off and if he was to go to another club, that is a failure. I said in last week's podcast, someone at Barcelona had said Manchester United have been very correct in their dealings with us. But 18 months ago, someone told me United don't need to be correct. They need to know the dark arts in football. Football is not a clean business. It's a dirty business. You've got to get the players in one way or another. And again, someone at Barca said to me last week, everyone's talking to everybody. You know, you've got to know what's going on. Players are talking all the time to their agents. And if the bottom line is that the players United are targeting don't come to the club, then that represents a failure. I think one one thing I get the sense of is essentially Manchester United, at some form of executive level, are afraid of looking embarrassed. Right, and when you say, "Oh, a club is taking the mick because they're quoting you a price that's ridiculous," sometimes you just got to take that to the face, right? Sometimes, okay, this is overpaid for a football player, but we really need him. We need to get the thing done. Do that, and then work smarter next time. Or one thing that always really, really annoys me uh, is when certain players get linked to Manchester United and they end up at Real Madrid, and the idea is, "Oh, well, you know, the person had their heart set on Spain." I'm like, okay, fine. The question next should be, what can Manchester United do to lessen get that gap? And yeah, we know that the weather in Manchester is not quite the weather in Spain. And Andy, well, Andy can, if Andy can tell you all the great things about Manchester and all the really good social, like, why are we able to better articulate why a player should come to Manchester United than Manchester United staff? Why is Czech the core a better defensive midfielder than Manchester United's current options gone to Crystal Palace? Why does Bubakar Kamara go to Aston Villa where Manchester United were, oh, well, you know, player. Like, these are good players moving to Premier League clubs outside of the Champions League spots. We can't, you can't say, oh, you know, we haven't got Champions League football. When, look at all the other teams in the Premier League that are able to get better players for issues of need of, that Manchester United can't get. It, what I think a big issue is, is the lack of decisiveness on targets. So this is why Eric Ten Hag and United might justifiably say, we've backed Eric Ten Hag. These are the players that he's wanted. Um, but it feels like it's too much that way. You know, Did he do this at Ajax? Was he so integral to the recruitment at Ajax that he was literally picking players? I don't think he was. So do, why do you give you know the, the handover all the reins to this 
you know, a new manager, it, should it recruitment team that's been in place for a number of years, that's been scouting hundreds of players across the globe, not say, actually, here's some other players. And you mentioned a couple there, Carl, that you kind of wonder, okay, what could have happened there? United will say we weren't in for that player. They weren't good enough for us. But when have they signed a player that has then gone, okay, that was a smart move and you can I can see what they're doing there. We're probably still back to Bruno Fernandes where it wasn't a cheap option, but at least he came in. People weren't necessarily sure about him, but he's, he has delivered. I know we've, we've questioned some aspects to his game overall, but you've got to say that's a, a pretty positive transfer. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm curious as to this summer, why it's come this way, where we're now into a situation as we had with Marco Arnautovic, where Ten Hag probably thinking... I need a guy in that can do a job for me. That's got character. Um, you know, we can discuss the, um, the the different indiscretions that he had where he got his ban for UEFA. Um, but at the same time, Tenag thinks that this is a guy that won't lack for self belief. So, and I know him from FT Twenty. Let, let's get him in. Where's the check and balance at United to say actually it's not a good idea for the football reasons and also for the wider reasons? And, and then ultimately they pull out once you know there's. Reaction. There's other people perhaps um, get in there saying actually this isn't a good idea, and and then they change their minds. So, you know, we, we're getting to Adrian Rabiot. I know you spoke about that last week, Carl. So it it feels like a lot of this is a lot of this is put on Ten Hag when I don't think it should be. It's it's such it's such a reactive club though. And Laurie talks about things not getting done. I've been writing about the stadium development more, more than anybody for a decade now, and finally under intense pressure, it was announced that they're going to do the stadium. The lack of a women's team was another thing which was criticised for years. And finally, United did it. The youth system, I wrote really strong stuff about that in 2015. And finally, extra money was put into it. it it's not a club which is thinking, like you, you mentioned Manchester City. I know from speaking to former managers and people who've been associated there, they're planning two or three years ahead. Manchester United are playing catch-up on two or three years behind all the time. And that's not good either. 